Hi everyone. Today we want to share about how we're leveraging the newest technology to rethinking how we work here at Meta, specifically around incident response. At Meta, we serve over half of the world's internet's population on a daily basis. And this is not something that we take very lightly. And which is why we always want to make sure that fewest incidents occur. And when they do, we try to resolve them for as fast as possible. Because every second that our site is down means that collectively we might be losing tens or even hundreds of years together. And not only is that number staggering, we also hear directly from our users about how this is impacting them. User relied on us to connect with their loved ones. In addition to that, we also serve millions of businesses that have their livelihood depending on our systems working. In fact, we're not the only party that actually gets notified when an incident happens. In the past, we have heard about police and government's agency being informed when our site is down. But keeping our, our site is no easy task. Our infra has been scaling in the last 10 plus years with our products and the users that we support. And there are a lot of dependency between services, there are high complexity in our systems, and there are just a large number of change happening at any given time. So it's very easy to make unintentional changes that actually have cascading effects that developers may not be aware of when they're making that change. Hi, my name is Diana Xu, and I'm one of the PM here at our Infra. And today we want to talk through a little bit about how we're rethinking how to manage incident and meta leveraging Gen AI specifically some of the problems that we already know about and have been working on for a few years. Before we dive in too much of this, let's take a step back and look at how we think about a life cycle at incidents. It starts all the way from it happened to being actually discovered by the team to finding out and trying to figure out what is the root cause, what is the actual problem that we need to go and solve to then quickly mitigating it and bringing the site up. Today, this is actually very manual. And because of that, it's very stressful and frankly, a little chaotic. So how do we help? Specifically, that start with investigation phase. Right now, this might look like a straight line. But in reality, there are tons of people jumping in to help. We have one group of people that's called them existing responders who might already be involved with this after the incident has been notified. And they're trying to actually start jumping in and looking into specific paths of the things that they're experts on. At the same time, we have many new responders jumping in and helping. For them, they have to quickly figure out what has already been happening so that they can help. So from the responders' point of view, it's actually more like this. In that first, they need to be onboarded. They need to dig through all the history and chat threads about what's going on, what has already been ruled out. They also need to then jump in and help identify the root cause. And then once we find a root cause, multiple people might have to all work together to mitigate it. So that actually creates an interesting tensions between these group of users. If you look at the right side charts between the two groups, you'll notice that for new responders today, they're actually cannot move forward and they're blocked from helping without getting some information from the existing responders first. But from the existing responders' point of view, a lot of time they're already deep trying to investigate one or multiple issues that could potentially be the cause. So for existing responders, we're actually distracting them. We're trying to pull them back of the things that they're working on so that they can go answer some questions. So this actually creates a bad experience for both sides. Now I'm going to hand off to my colleague, Mohammed to talk through a little bit about some of our efforts here. Thanks, Dana. Hi, everyone. I'm Mohammed Farag, a software engineer working with Dana in the data org around incident management. As Dana has explained, onboarding responders to incident is critical. We need help of everyone that we can get to get incident resolved. We can't do everything on our own. Yet this onboarding process it's not that easy, it's difficult. And it's not also something new. This has been on top of our mind for a while now. We have tried various solutions, yet nothing is a silver bullet. 
everything has trade-offs. We actually tried multiple approaches, some of which are asking responders to provide regular summaries of how things are going during the incident. These summaries can be then used by onboarding responders to onboard faster without having to go through everything, all different sources of information. Yet, it can be a bit difficult during a stressful incident to remember to provide these updates. And even if you remember, it can be very stressful that sometimes you are too focused on trying to resolve the incident yourself that you actually don't want to actually share these summaries. And let's not forget, even if you provide these summaries, a few minutes later you tried something new, you learned new pieces of information, things have changed. We even tried assigning roles. For example, an individual would be assigned a journalist role. This means that that individual would help onboard responders, protecting existing responders from any follow-ups or questions or reach-outs, while also helping the responders that are new to the incident on board. Yet, this doesn't really scale that well. Teams might be short on hand during an incident, and even if they are not short on hand, in large incidents you can have tens of in parallel work streams going at the same time. So, what do we do about it? We found the interest, the latest advances in LLMs to be one opportunity for us. So, we started using it to help onboarding responders. And the flow for onboarding changes significantly from what Diana have shown a few minutes back. So, what has changed? As you can see right now, once an, a responder's page, for example, around the verbal box, they no longer have to actually go through tons of different sources of information. They have a real-time generated summary of the incident given to them, containing all relevant information from the ongoing discussion to current status of the system. And we don't stop there. They also have an LM chatbot or LM assistant that can answer all their follow-up questions if they have any, helping protect the existing responder's time and speed up responses to the onboarding responders. As you can see, there are no connections between the existing responders and the onboarding responders anymore. The onboarding responder get immediate responses from the LLM assistant and they quickly onboard to join on the investigation and the response. But Let's dig deeper how did we actually do it. Once a new responder opens the incident management tool, they are faced with a real-time generated summary. It gives them that quick overview to catch up on the incident. It can contain different sources of information and it even references the different sources of information that were used to build up that summary so that the responder can actually check these sources of information to verify or even get more information on that aspect. And once they are caught up, they might have follow-up questions. They are able to utilize Meta's internal LLM-based assistant. It has access to many different artifacts within Meta. It also has access to the ongoing discussion for the instant, enabling it to answer any follow-up questions. This enables responders to get all their questions answered and immediately they are able to, um, to jump in and help out with the investigation. Now, onboarding is a mean to an end. We don't want to have everyone just for the sake of having them in there. It's not a party, I assure you. And now that we have the folks that we need, we need to actually get their help to actually investigate the incident. But investigation comes with its own different challenges. Let me pass it back to Diana, who will talk a bit about some of these challenges Thanks, Mohamed. Now that we already help the responders being onboarded, now let's take them to the next part about how do we quickly find the root cause of an issue and diagnose the actual problems. First, let's try to understand what are the different causes for our incidents. That might be something around deployment and code changes. It might be something where they're just our system is just overwhelmed, or there can even be physical failures. For today, let's focus on the first type, which is code changes. And specifically, this is actually really hard at Meta because of our unique architecture of our system. Specifically that we have something called monolithic repo. 
So what that really means is even though we support various different type of apps and features, for most people and most developers, they're actually making changes into a single repo. And what that means is that at various times, there are thousands of changes happening at the same time. And then in addition to that, there are many dependencies then multiple developers might be making changes throughout that dependency change. So multiple changes happen at the same time. So what that means is that it's actually really hard for responders to try to figure out what's happening. First, they have to figure out what type and what might be the cause of this particular incident. They have to look through various of data, various of logs to then try to narrow down. But that's a, they figure that out. We already narrowed down that this is caused by code changes. Now, throughout the code changes that we talked about, they have to try to correlate the data that they're seeing together so that they can further scope down these issues. And even once they get to, say, hundreds of codes, now they have to try to figure out and interpret different lines, trying to understand what is the impact of these changes. And all of this can be very time-consuming and very manual. And without it, they cannot go and mitigate the issues. Now, that may pass to Mohammed to talk through some of the innovative way that we're doing to help in here. Thanks, Dana. As Dana have shared, we have tons of challenges to identifying the root cause of an incident. And having tens of thousands of changes a day doesn't make it any easier. So how do we go about to actually pinpointing that single change that actually triggers the whole incident? Fortunately, we have a very solid data model around incidents in Meta. And responders have been doing a good job collecting data across historical incidents. We were able to analyze historical incidents to identify a few trends and patterns that we evolved into a set of heuristics to build a correlation between a change and a given incident. Some of these heuristics are very simple. For the given systems that were impacted, are the same set of owners actually own the, ch the files that were changed. Some are a bit more complex. For example, the given ABI, which was impacted by this incident, what files does it depend on it? It's basically a runtime dependency graph. Using these heuristics, we were able to reduce the search space significantly. We went down from tens of thousands of changes to a few hundred. This is a 100x reduction, yet we didn't see significant changes in terms of accuracy. Now, this is amazing results, but we need to be a bit realistic. It's infeasible for responders during an incident to actually go through hundreds of changes when time is of essence. So what do we do about it? We started looking at these changes to understand a bit how to reduce it further. And one thing we noticed in common is most of these changes were actually relevant to the system that's related to this incident or was impacted by the incident. And maybe it updated the system or changed some of its dependencies, but they are all related somehow. So what we needed were a way to reason about the changes, how they might alter the behavior of the system and lead to this given incident. This was an opportunity where we thought we can tap into LLMs as a way to reason about changes. So we started using a 7 billion I Llama 2, which is a fine-tuned version of Llama 2 on internal data and internal business context. This model was fine-tuned also on the use case of identifying incident root cause. We would give this model all the relevant context for an incident, along with the changes that we have found from the previous step. And the model would be able to give us the most relevant five or so changes that might be the root cause or the trigger of this incident. Now, I mentioned Llama 2. You might be aware that Llama 2 has a limited context window of 16K tokens. So how did we go about it when some of the changes can be very large and we might not be able to fit in all few hundred changes? This is where we combined a divide and conquer approach with an election, a ranking by election. Basically, we split these changes into pages, each of a size of 20. 
some pages might be less than 20 changes. And for each given page, we pass it to the model along with the information from the incident. And we ask the model, what are the most likely five or so changes out of this set? This ends up giving a set of changes that are usually around five or less. Now we have eliminated around 75%, 15 changes from each page, which is good. What we do now is combine each four or so pages to get back a page of size 20. And this gives us a new set of pages of size 20, as you can see, similar to the yellow box in the diagram. Of course, we may have multiple pages of size 20 at this step, and this is where we keep repeating on this cycle until we end up with a single page of size of 5. Of course, the final output might be less than 5 changes, and this is the set of changes we give back to the responder to examine, which may include the root cause, hopefully. Now in theory it all sounds very exciting and promising, but how do the results look like? I will hand it back to my colleague Diana to share some of the exciting results we have found through our work. We're super excited to share some of the early promising results that we're already seeing in both onboarding as well as root causing the problem. For our onboarding efforts, we're starting to see responders reacting very positively to the real-time summary as well as answering the questions to help them quickly figure out what is happening. Almost half of our incidents are already relying on this. And then 86% of the time, people find it to be super helpful. Now, moving on to root cause analysis. This is where we're starting to see very promising results, where within minutes of an incident being created, we can actually find the potential root cause 42% of the time. So what that really means is that as a developer, Instead of spending hours trying to figure out, dig through various data, codes, etc., you actually have this information right off the bat to help you and help reduce that stress. Obviously, with this new technology, it wasn't all smooth. And there's a lot of learnings that we have to look through, especially using this new technology, where AI does tend to hallucinate a bit. So how do we, especially during an incident time, where providing Wrong information can be catastrophic. This means that we're taking people precious time to look for the wrong cause so that they're not actually looking at what they actually need to do. So with that, we come up with three principles with our design as how we are leveraging Gen AI. The first one is we have to be very transparent to earn the trust. We need to make sure that we're very clear about the limitations about AI and then understand, helping people understand where is it getting its information from. Secondly, it needs to be very explainable. People need to be able to follow along AI's logic as well as the step that it's taking so that they can understand what to watch out for and then also avoid providing a single recommendations so that they can also try out things themselves. Third, we need to make sure that this is very actionable. Not only do we want to help responders during the time or the cases that AI can help. We also want to up-level them. We want to up-level their skill sets. So when the time that AI cannot help today, they can actually bring the knowledge along and then do this manually in a, in a less stressful way. What we see is AI have the potential to really change how incident can be handled a meta in that it can help across all stages of incident, all the way from it when it's happening to the time that it's being mitigated work. We can bring down this entire cycle from hours to minutes. And not only that, because our infra supports the entire developer life cycles, we also imagine new ways that having this information can actually proactively preventing incident from happening in the futures. How do we learn about this to make sure that these learnings or apply into coding development. We have a saying here at Meta that the journey is only 1% complete. And we very much believe that is true in this case. We have a very new technology that really is going to change how we work, especially around incident management. Thank you everyone for taking your time and learning with us.